Middlesbrough. Steve would often tell me stories of when he lived in the North East, of the things up there he liked the most and the things he liked the least. He'd been on and on for ages for me to go up there. One day, I actually agreed. I stupidly said, yeah. So off we went to South Shields, me and my Geordie mates, on a coach to go see Stephen's dad in the Horsley Hill estate. When we finally made it, I got off the coach with newly opened eyes as I gradually began to understand the North and South divide. See, all the houses had been boarded up with great big metal sheets. Steve drove me round his neighbourhood because we had people there to meet. I met lots of Stephen's Geordie chums, including his best pal, a lovely lad called Richie, who liked to have a row. And it was on day two of my northern trip that Richie invited us to the Empire Club in Middlesbrough in a hired minibus. The Geordies were all sound as fuck, and the Empire, I'd been told, was a fucking banging nightclub with DJ Paul Oakenfold. On arrival at the nightclub, Richie was assigned to make sure I wasn't beaten up and he assured me I'd be fine. So I said I'd stay with Richie, but it appeared he had dislikes for the guy who was stood next to us and began flattening his spikes. The spikes of ultraviolet gelled up funky hair that the guy had styled really well, but Richie didn't care. He kept on flattening down the spikes into an ultraviolet heap. The man started to push Richie, who then did a judo sweep. The guy then landed on the floor and Richie disappeared. I realised maybe Richie was more trouble than I'd feared. I found Richie sitting on a landing, holding those sticks that really glow. Some lad now wanted them glow sticks back, but Richie had said no. Howie, they're my glow sticks now. They're mine to fucking keep. The guy tried to snatch those glow sticks back. He then received a judo sweep. He fell down two flights of stairs and was clearly in some pain. I bet if someone else takes his glow sticks, he won't try that shit again. I then found Steve by the ladies loose, slapping all the ladies asses. Some of their bums now shone so bright, I had to put on my tinted glasses. The club, music-wise, was banging. Steve still found it all a bore. Howie, he said, let's leave this club and go and find a whore. I kind of just went along with it and walked out into the dark. Howie, I got told we'd find some whores in the nearby lorry park. There didn't seem to be any. Then Steve said, look over there. A car had wound its window down to reveal a whore with braided hair. Howie, lads, are you looking for a lady of the night? Why, I said Steve. Get out of the car. So the hooker said, all right. The three of us walked down the street, me, Stephen and the whore. She said, a fuck is only £20, but a spit roast will be more. We got behind a building when Steve thought it would be funny to say, Yeah, give my mate the fucking works. Then hand the horse some money. So I stood there, gurning from all the ease in the Middlesbrough smog. And what, Steve, are you going to do? I'm going to have a wank sat on this log. So the whore began to suck my cock. But Steve said, for £40, you can at least play with yourself. OK, said the whore. Then Steve laid upon the ground. It's dark and I can't see fuck all. Steve began to whinge. So Steve flicked up his lighter flame, which burnt the hooker's minge. Howie, you fucking bastards. You burnt my pussy hairs. You better stay away from me somewhere over there. All this time, I stood there spanked, whilst this woman gave me head. Then her phone rang, ring, 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 which she answered, and this is what she said. I can't talk right now, as I am with a punter, and my mouth is full of penis. Then I felt some liquid land, 
which I think had splashed between us. Oh, we, you horrible cunt, she said, hitting Steve repeatedly. I have to work in these clothes tonight and you've just spunked all over me. You've missed out because of your mate, she said as she stunned off in a huff. Her clothes had all been drenched in spunk and Steve had burnt her muff. Council Pop. Council Pop, said Geordie Steve. That's my favourite drink. It comes out my cold water tap located by my sink. <laughs> Shitty Steve. Geordie Steve was snorting ease <sniffs> when he began to strain. Oh, fucking hell, said Geordie Steve. I've shit my pants again. The toad. Why, I man, look at this, said Geordie Steve, as he crouched down in the road. This poor little guy, let's help him out, Steve stated, picking up an injured toad. How we? Let's bandage him up and clean him. Perhaps then he won't die, was what Geordie Steve suggested whilst trying not to cry. I told Steve the toad was finished and that there was nothing we could do. So rather than see the toad in pain, Steve stomped on him with his shoe. 